In this lesson, we're going to be looking at content type headers. Um, and more specifically, we're doing this not so we can actually look at the content type header, but rather so you have a better understanding of one, what headers are and how we can set them, and two, where I'm going in the documentation to find this sort of thing so that as we progress through the course, you can use the docs to fill in any gaps you might have or to learn additional things. Because while this course is a great way to learn a lot of this material, there will be times where you want to dig a little bit further or maybe something not covered in this course is something you need to learn about. So I'm going to sort of walk you through how I might use the docs and some of the things in there that you can find useful and how you might just sort of navigate them as you're going through. So headers are things that provide additional information about a web request. So we can set them in the response, provide them back, and they won't be rendered on the screen, but they can actually affect how things are rendered. For instance, the content type header, which is one we're going to use here, tells the browser what type of content we're sending back, whether it's HTML or if it's plain text or if it's an image or something else. And that way the browser knows, okay, I can process this in a different way because how it shows an image is going to be different from how it shows plain text or HTML. Now, there are times where this can be done automatically. So we don't have anything here talking about headers or content types. But if we go to our code here and we refresh this page and we look in the network tab, you'll notice that, I need to refresh, um, we have a content type header of text slash HTML, colon or semicolon, and caroset UTF-8. So what's happening here is I believe the Go side of it is actually looking at the bytes in the response body, this stuff here, and it's deciding that this looks like HTML and because we didn't set any sort of content type, it sets it for us. But if we want to be explicit, we can. We can actually call w.header.set. And instead of this text slash HTML, we can do text slash plain. And we don't even have to put the care set if we don't want it right now. So I can call this. Uh, oh, I need the name of it. So it's the content type header. And I'm going to set the value to text slash plain. So with that, I can go back to our code. And I'm currently running mod with dynamic reloading. I'm going to continue doing that through the rest of the course. So the server is going to restart. And if I refresh, you'll see that we're now seeing um, the H1 tags are being rendered here as text. And if we go to the network and look at it, you'll see that the header is set to text slash plain as the content type. So now that we're explicitly setting a content type, Go is not going to set any sort of defaults for us. So this is a nice thing. Um, you know, most of the time if we have HTML, it's nice that the server will, or the Go code will automatically set it for us, but it's usually probably better to be explicit here. So um, let's go ahead and just set this all, refresh this page, and we should be good, assuming I didn't have any typos or anything. And what I want to do now is I want to walk through how I figured out to call w.header.set to do all of this and to, to set everything. So the first thing I want to mention is the content type header. You're probably wondering, how did I know about that? And if we go, uh, let's just go to headers, HTML. Um, well, this isn't very useful. Uh, the best way I can put this is um, the content type header and a lot of these other really common headers aren't going to be uh, things that are specific to Go. Instead, they're things that are generic to all of the web. So content type is a header that with browsers is used all the time to tell them what type of content type it is. And even with, um, if it's not a browser, if you're having an API that other things are communicating with, content type can still be useful to tell it, are you sending me JSON? Are you sending me something else? And there are APIs that actually can handle multiple different types of content types. Um, so whenever you're communicating with them, they might accept both JSON or XML as long as you tell it which one it is. So Content types are used for all sorts of things like that. And there's a bunch of other headers that are, are not specific to Go. They're just specific to you know, building web applications and that sort of thing. And most of these are things that you'll sort of pick up over time. You don't need to go read these docs and, and sort of learn them all right away. I don't find that to be very useful. It's something that, in my experience, they'll be introduced to you through tutorials or, or as you're building things, you'll, you'll learn and read about what you need to have. Um, and you might occasionally have to read it docs or specific things for something if you're implementing a new feature, but it's not something where you just need to sit down with all the docs and read through them front to back. That's not really a useful way to learn, um, at least this type of stuff. 
Now, the second thing is, how did we know to even call w.header.set? You know, if we knew that we needed a content type header, but we still need to figure out how to actually set it in our Go code, how did I figure that out? And for this, I want to go to the HTTP docs for Go, and we're going to look for the response writer type. So that's the interface that we have to send a response back. So we know that that's present, and we know that that's how we're going to send responses back to any web request. And if we look through this, there's only three methods. There's the header method, there's the write method, and um, in addition to the write method, there's the write header method. And at first, the write header method probably looks like the right one, but if we look at this closely, we'll see that it only allows us to pass in a status code, and it's really only there to set the status code. So that's not the one we want. Write is for writing the response body, so the only one left is header. And you can see here that it sounds like it might be what we want, and it returns this header type. So if we click on the header type, we can start to see that there are other methods here that we could work with. Um, one is add, which sounds like it might do what we want, and then there's also one called set. So this is um, a reason to sometimes look through all the docs for a type before just picking something. While we could technically use add here, I feel that set is a better fit because set will actually replace any existing values and just set it with what we're providing, whereas add will keep adding values, so it won't actually overwrite what's currently there. And in this case, for the content type, we actually wanted to overwrite anything that might be there on the off chance that some other piece of code or something else said it, because in this point, we actually want it to be HTML. So as I mentioned, um, I don't expect you to use the docs this way. Uh, I don't expect, or sorry, I don't expect you to use the docs as your only way of learning is how I should put it. In my experience, most of this development process and learning is gonna come from seeing other code, experimenting, um, through watching courses or anything like that, reading books and just looking at working code and then trying to figure out what that code does or how you could tweak it. Now, there will be times where you do want to look at the docs. For instance, if you need to fill in some gaps as to how something works or if you need to do something not covered in a course, um, you know, there are definitely times where you're going to use the docs. But it's just, in my experience, when you're starting from the ground up, you don't go read the docs top to bottom and then then think, oh, okay, now I know everything, I can go build stuff. Instead, you're often sort of looking for specific things and how to do one specific thing. Like in this case, we were looking at how to set a header. So you go into the docs with a sort of goal in mind and you dig through and you and you read the different, um, you know, the different descriptions for things and, and all, the, or, uh, all the documentation. And then from the documentation, you can try to figure out what you need to do. So docs are also useful over time to just sort of fill in gaps. So if you're taking a course like this one or any other course, I highly recommend looking at the docs for some of the code you're writing and different functions you're using to get a better feel for how those things work. So my goal with this video was really to show you the docs and to show you how to use them so that you can fill in those gaps and fill in your knowledge as you're learning through other resources or whatever else you're using. And I hope that that's helpful as you progress because in my experience, it is very nice to have a better feel for how these things work rather than just trusting somebody showing you the right way.